Hello guys, this is Indian Medico and in this video, we are going to see about Acoustic Neuroma. This is a concise presentation for medical students. The term Acoustic Neuroma is actually a misnomer because of two reasons. Firstly, the tumor arises from the vestibular division of the 8th cranial nerve, not from the cochlear division as indicated by the word Acoustic. Secondly, the tumor is derived from Schwann cells of the associated nerve which are responsible for myelin sheet and not from the nerve per se as indicated by the word Neuroma. Thus, acoustic neuroma is a misnomer because of these two reasons. Acoustic neuroma is also known as vestibular schwannoma, neurilemoma or 8th nerve tumor. It is a benign encapsulated, extremely slow growing tumor of the myelin forming cells of the 8th cranial nerve. Coming to the pathology of this disease, microscopically it consists of elongated spindle cells with rod shaped nuclei lying in rows or palisades. Now let us see about the origin and growth of acoustic neuroma. A acoustic neuroma arises from the Schwann cells of the vestibular division of the 8th cranial nerve within the internal auditory canal. As the tumor expands, it causes expansion and widening and erosion of the internal auditory canal and then appears in the cerebellopontine angle. From here, the tumor may grow anteroposteriorly to involve the 5th cranial nerve or inferiorly to involve the 9th, 10th and 11th cranial nerves. In later stages, the tumor causes displacement of brainstem, pressure on cerebellum and raised intracranial tension. Remember that acoustic neuroma shows extremely slow growth and ST may extend over several years. This picture shows an acoustic neuroma. This is a three-dimensional picture of an acoustic neuroma. Now coming to the classification of acoustic neuroma, acoustic neuroma can be classified into four types depending on its size. It can be called intracranial when it is confined to internal auditory canal. It is called small size when the size is less than 1.5 cm. It is medium size when the size is between 1.5 and 4 cm. It is large size when the size is greater than 4 cm. Coming to the cochlear vestibular symptoms seen in acoustic neuroma. These are the earliest symptoms. They are due to pressure on cochlear or vestibular nerve fibers or on the internal auditory artery. Progressive unilateral sensory neural hearing loss is a chief symptom. Acoustic neuroma can also present with tinnitus. There will be marked difficulty in understanding speech which is out of proportion to the pure tone hearing loss. This is a classical feature seen in acoustic neuroma. Sudden hearing loss can also be seen in some cases. There will be imbalance or unsteadiness due to involvement of the vestibular system. Coming to the cranial nerve involvement in acoustic neuroma. Due to the involvement of the fifth cranial nerve, there will be reduced corneal sensitivity and numbness or paresthesia of face. Due to the involvement of the seventh cranial nerve, there will be hypoesthesia of posterior meatal wall, which is called as Itzelberger's sign. There will be loss of taste. There will be reduced lacrimation, which can be seen on Schumer test. And there will be delayed blink reflex. Due to the involvement of the 9th and 10th cranial nerves, there will be dysphagia and hoarseness of eyes. Cranial nerves 11, 12, 3, 4 and 6 are affected when the tumor is very large. Coming to the brainstem involvement, due to the involvement of the brainstem, there can be ataxia, weakness and numbness of arms and legs and there will be exaggerated tendon reflexes. The cerebellum will be involved in case of large tumors. It can be tested by finger nose test and knee heel test. There will be dysdiadocokinesia and the patient will be suffering from ataxic gait and he will be unable to walk along a straight line with tendency to fall to the affected side. Raised ICT is a late feature. Due to raised ICT, there will be headache, nausea, vomiting. Diplopia can be seen due to the 6th cranial nerve involvement. There will be papilledema with blurring of vision due to the raised intracranial tension. What are the investigations that you will do in a case of acoustic neuroma? Pure tone audiometry with speech discrimination score. Speech discrimination score shows a phenomenon called rollover phenomenon. Rollover phenomenon is the reduction of discrimination score when loudness is increased beyond a particular limit. Other investigations are stepedial reflex decay, evo evoked response audiometry, MRI with gadolinium contrast. MRI with gadolinium contrast is considered to be the gold standard in the diagnosis of acoustic neuroma. Other tests are caloric tests and neurological tests like cranial nerve examination. This is an MRI image of an acoustic neuroma. Coming to the differential diagnosis of acoustic neuroma. Acoustic neuroma can be confused with cochlear pathology like Meniere's disease and other cerebellopontine angle tumors like meningioma, primary cholesteatoma, arachnoidal cyst, schwannoma of other cranial nerves like cranial nerve number 5, 7, 9, 10 and 11, aneurysm, glomus tumor and metastasis. How do you treat a case of acoustic neuroma? Surgery is considered to be the treatment of choice for acoustic neuroma. There are various approaches for a surgery of acoustic neuroma. They are middle cranial fossa approach, trans labyrinthine approach, suboccipital approach and combined trans labyrinthine suboccipital approach. Radiotherapy is indicated when surgery is contraindicated. Conventional radiotherapy is not preferred in the treatment of acoustic neuroma 
because of the low tolerance of the central nervous tissue to radiation. So, improved techniques such as X knife or gamma knife surgery is used. This is a stereotactic radiotherapy where radiation energy is converged on the tumor, thus minimizing its effect on the surrounding normal tissue. Cyber knife is another improved version of the X knife technique. Thank you.